Hi, my name is Viviana Sundipun. I will present about the challenges faced by Dato Seri Najib during his premiership. Dato Seri Haji Muhammad Najib bin Tun Haji Abdul Razak was born on 23 July 1953 in Kuala Lipis, Pahang. He is the eldest son of Prime Minister Tun Abdul Razak Hussein and Top Wanraha Muhammad Noah. He completed his bachelor's degree with honors in industrial economics from the University of Nottingham, England in 1974. Before he becomes the Prime Minister, he had held numerous positions in the cabinet including Deputy Minister of Education, Deputy Minister of Finance, and many more. One of the challenges facing by Dato Najib during his premiership is, since 2014, he faced with various controversies and issues that shook the people's trust in his leadership, whereby his position began to be widely questioned both by the citizen and his opponents due to all the scandals accused against him. Among the controversies and scandals involving his leadership include the death of one Malaysia development berhad, political donation amounting to 2.6 billion, and the Tabung Haji Land transaction. The issue of donation amounting to 2.6 billion, Najib is alleged to have received a large amount of funds from abroad which are alleged to be political donation received from the Saudi. This has received widespread media reports both locally and abroad, such as the media in the United States, the Wall Street Journal. Even the second challenge faced by Dato Najib is when his policies was not popular among the citizen. On the basis of government rationalization, he started implementing the goods and services tax to Malaysian. This tax is said to cover the country's expenses and income. It is also said to cover the lack of government revenue in implementing development. Apart from that, he also eliminates various subsidies, especially on basic goods, which were previously covered by the state, such as petroleum, sugar, and cooking oil. Toll rates and public transport, transport fares were also increased. All these measures have affected the daily lives of the people because all of this involved the basic needs of society. Najib's action has burdened the people cost of living and is contrary to his previous approach of helping the people. Even after the GST was implemented, the complaints never faded away. Survey results show that most Malaysian taxpayers disagree with statements like the GST should be implemented in Malaysia and the GST is fairer than the SST. Malaysian economic policy under Datu Sri Najib First is new economic model. On 2 May 2009, Prime Minister Najib Tun Razak announced the government plan to develop a new economic model that will speed Malaysia transition to a high-income country. The plan will emphasize a way to increase the income and productivity of workers by encouraging knowledge, industry, and increasing investment from overseas. The goal of New economic model, according to Najib, is to transform the Malaysian economy become one with high incomes and quality growth by 2020. The keys to the plan are described by Najib on 30 March at the unveiling are high income, sustainability, and inclusiveness. The goal is to stimulate economic growth by improving worker productivity across all sectors of society, in part through an improved system of affirmative action with an eye towards sustainability. Among others, reform remains to accomplish the goal. The new economic model seeks to empower the private sector and to reduce fiscal disparity between the wealthiest and poorest of the nation. The plan is intended to replace the new economic policy NEP. Najib criticized the way that the NEP had been implemented over its 40 year history, arguing that affirmative action policy of the new economic policy needed to be better targeted. Other than the new economic model, the next Malaysian economic policies introduced under the Tok Sri Najib is the six strategic reform initiatives trees, which was implemented to boost the country's competitiveness whereby the trees consists of public finance reform, the government's role in business, human capital development, public service delivery, international standard and liberalization, and Bumiputra small-medium enterprise. 
The Swiss were clustered based on 37 policy measures recommended by the National Economic Advisory Council NEAC from a total of 51 policy suggestions. The remaining measures were included in the National Key Economic Areas NKEAs, and National Key Result Areas. The Swiss encompassed the NKEAs, which were the drivers to ensure focus and the enabler to ensure competitiveness, which also means that the Swiss are the key to a high income nation. Conclusion for chapter 10 is what we can conclude from the premiership of Datu Najib are he has many success, such as one Malaysia concept. In one Malaysia concept, a belief in the importance of national unity, irrespective of race or religious belief, and efficient of government. One Malaysia aims to retain and strengthen unity in various aspects. Then, new economy model, 10 Malaysian plan, government transformation program, and the national key resort areas.